time to introduce what we're doing for um, today and uh, for the next two weeks, really. Um, well, more. We're doing this this week, and then we're transitioning into what we're going to use the or how this is going to help us in the future. But next week will be largely the um, predominantly like composition, viewfinding, and rendering week. But this week, I'm showing you your first lesson on Grasshopper. Yeah, I know. But don't be intimidated because I know some of you might have heard that it's ra a rather complex thing. I'm giving you predefined scripts for this one. Okay. So what we're essentially doing with it is, um, well, I'll have to pop it on and, and show you here. Let me. Um, well, the first thing I should show you here is how do you open Grasshopper, all right? So let me ask you real quick, how many of you know what Grasshopper is? I know of Grasshopper. A little bit. A couple of people have heard of it. So Grasshopper is um, basic, ba basically it's a computational modeler, right? So it takes algorithms, right, a set of rules that you define for your design in whatever form that takes, and it generates your models for you. So it's all parametric modeling. So basically, if I was to say I need you know, this opening to be 5 feet between 5 feet and 25 feet, and it's on a slider, I could literally just slide the thing back and forth, and the mouth of the model would just kind of open and close until I found precisely what it is that I wanted. Okay, So that's kind of the, the more tactile feel for what it does. What we're going to use it for is automatic application of simple mullion systems. So you might ask yourself, uh, A, what's a mullion system? And B, um, why do we need to be able to do that? And the reason is um, having some kind of way of dropping in more detailed elements into your models is extremely valuable. So if you can get a nice looking storefront mullion system, and mullions, by the way, are the little dividers on the windows that you see up there or at the end of the hall or down here in the, um, the lobby space, you know, those big, big window systems, those are mullions. Um, so I've predefined this definition specifically for that. Basically, and I'm going to run through this real fast, and then I'm going to walk you through all the specifics about it. But all you have to do in your model is um, preset it up uh, once it loads. That's interesting. That's Grasshopper. I'll explain it in a second. But all you have to do is define a simple surface. That's all that is, is just one surface. Okay, and then in Grasshopper, all you do is uh, grab your Grasshopper definition and open it. Might take a second to load because I think it's pre-programmed pre for what I have. And it's going to look a little something like this depending on how detailed your particular definition is. This one, I totally clustered it all specifically for you. Those are the variables that you change on the left. That's the geometry that gets pushed out on the right. And what it creates is this. And all you have to do to change it is this. So if I want to go up to six subdivisions, I just change this number to six. And after these very slow computers calculate it. Oh, did that not change? Oh, it's still calculating. Hang on. There you go. Six subdivisions. And um, back here, um, you're going to have the ability to select particular BREP elements back and forth. So this one is preloaded with a glazing surface that has thickness and a mullion system. So you can change that mullion system to be whatever thick or depth or thickness you want. So right now it's um, a half a foot thick, but I could make it three feet thick if I wanted, and it'll extend it away from the glazing by three feet, and that's going to create sort of more like a horizontal louver system in a way, almost. Again, after these very slow computers calculate. There. OK, so that's your brief introduction to uh, some of the very simple but very awesome tools that I'm going to be dropping here with you in class. Um, the vast majority of today 
is going to be uh, showing you the essential fundamentals that you need, much like we did in Illustrator, you know, very simple, very surface level, uh, to be able to take these definitions and apply them to your model and understand, you know, kind of what's happening behind the scenes a little bit, okay? So think of it this way. The best metaphor for this, I think, is that I'm, I'm giving you a car and I'm showing you how to drive it, but I'm not showing you how to build and engineer a car. Does that make sense? Okay. I got a couple of head nods. That's good enough. All right. So um, I guess without further ado, I'm going to stop this little intro video and I want to walk back into, you know, the overarching sort of grasshopper principles. Are there any questions right now? Easy to read? Yeah, like. Uh, you mean like visually you can't yeah, read it? Yeah, visually. Um, <laughs> it's not that much easier to read, not up here, but on your screen, the good thing is you'll have this definition. I'm literally giving it to you, and you'll see it much better on your screen. Oh. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Are you guys excited? <laughs> All right, Yvonne, this is going to save you tremendous amounts of time, oh. I guarantee you. So um, this is a very simple one. And when you guys go and do your designs, it might be easy for you to like offset a surface and then use like a Boolean trim to take all the little panels out and extrude it. That's probably very simple. But we're going to get to a point where we're developing, you know, these things on warped surfaces, which makes it so incredibly difficult. We're going to do it on uh, with hardware, where instead of having to map each little arm that reaches out and grabs the glass in a particular custom condition for all 150 of them, it's all going to do it automatically for you. So, and all of these tools I'm handing to you, so you should keep them forever. We can use them on our, our rhinos. Yep. Is this yeah. Yeah. What's that? Grasshopper is free, um, but if you guys are uh, if you guys are Rhino users on Mac, there is no Grasshopper for the Mac version. So that's important to know. Did it run slow? Uh, that's a good question. Does it run slow? Uh, the answer is sometimes, and it has to do with the fact that with Grasshopper, you're essentially um, performing programming functions. You're you're not really just doing you know like a sculptural move anymore where if you can't do it it can't do it when you're doing programming functions you might get yourself into a logic loop that the program just keeps trying to attempt 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 without being able to check itself for failure you know what i mean yeah. so i mean that's that's essentially what happens when your software freezes it got itself into a pro like a, a programming loop any other questions Oh, yeah. yeah, it happens all the time. Any other questions? Okay, let's get into it. <laughs>